Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking and Craft. Just thought I'd come on today and do another art journal page and turn the TV on. I'll turn the TV on, really. Turn the camera on while I'm doing it. So today I'm actually working in another altered book. This is just a hardcover novel um, that I picked up at my local library for next to nothing. They were clearing them out. So what I've done is I was watching a video by the, the Little Ink the other day and she suggested tearing out every second second page, second to third page, or third to fourth page. Um, what I found is I teared out every second page and then I glued two pages together and this is them there, but it's still quite still quite thin. So what then I did was glued two lots of two pages together and this is actually nice and sturdy and thick. So what I thought I'd do is have a go at using some watercolour media in here and see how the book stands up to it. I'm not going to gesso it, I'm just going to see how we go. So I was flicking through my magazines the other day, really loving this magazine collaging and adding some magazine collage and then doing some mixed media with it as well. Um, so I saw all these perfume bottles and I thought, ah, oh, that'd be cool. Or lipstick bottle, uh, not lipstick bottles, um, nail polish bottles. And I thought I might do a line of them. So I'll first cut a couple of them out and I'll first cut the rest with you today. Um, I thought if I do a line of them down the bottom, and I'm actually going to use them like vases, I'm going to take my watercolour pencils, which are just off to the side here, and draw flowers coming out of the top of them. So I thought if I was going to gesso the page, then the watercolour pencils don't really go well over gesso. So I've decided to see how this book holds up to um, a bit of water. I know the little ink doesn't just so many of her pages, um, so I just wanted to have a bit of an experiment. thought I'd bring you along for the ride. It might be a big fail. It might just gum up the pages, but I do have four pages stuck together. So I'm hoping that it will be just fussy cutting the rest of these little bottles out. I was going to do this before I turn the camera on. Just wondering if this book is going to live up to being a bit more, um, a bit more watery media than if I don't gesso the pages. Because I quite like the text showing through, and sort of if you gesso it, I find you lose a lot of the background. Um, There's a lot of the background as well. I've also set my timer for half an hour because I don't really want these videos going over half an hour. So this one might be a two-parter, depending on how much I sit there and fiddle with the composition and the layout of the flowers up the top. So I thought I'd set my phone timer for half an hour and if I, this becomes a two-part video, it becomes a two-part video. So just fussy cutting the last of these sort of perfume bottles out. Trying to collect some nicer magazines with nicer images in them without spending a fortune. But sometimes you even go into the op shop, and I was in the op shop, one of the op shops or charity shops, um, thrift stores, whatever you call them, the other day, and thought, oh, I picked up this Mary Claire magazine. I thought, oh, it's only going to be a fifty cents, twenty five cents. They wanted three dollars for it in in a in a thrift store. Op, we call them op shops or opportunity shops in Australia, but you call them thrift stores. I think over in America or charity stores. I'm thinking that's just a bit ridiculous. So let's stick these bigger ones down and see. Just going to use a normal cheapo glue stick. I can put that up there. I can actually grab some wax paper. Just a scrap bit of wax paper I've been painting on to do the gluing on. So let's start with this one. Still haven't got any software to actually edit videos, so this one will be going up in real time over two parts. Sticking these on, I may need more images, which I don't have actually with me at my table, so we'll see what we do. Place the big ones first, and that's filling with the little ones. Actually, this little one we might put. There, 
area. So if anyone in Australia actually does a lot of this collage and record can recommend some nice magazines that have nice pictures in them. If it's a decent magazine, I don't mind paying like a few dollars for it, but if I'm only going to get a few images out of it, then I'm not going to pay three dollars for a magazine. That's just a bit ridiculous. Um, I have to hunt around. There's some, we have a fair few, probably have 20 op shops around my area. Um, different ones run by churches, some run by um, some sort of independent, some are run by sort of like your Salvation Army or your chain scrap, uh, chain charity stores. I find the more independent ones are a bit more affordable and lower in their prices. I find the Salvation Army is just ridiculous. Lip priced. It's the same size. Um, so they actually, it's funny, in the Salvation Army, I've been told that they actually get a book pricer to come in and actually price their books. Which, how silly is that? You're supposed to be selling them at a, a rate so that um, people, disadvantaged people or people with not much money can buy them. But they just don't tend to... Just having a bit of play around with placement. I don't know whether I like. That one might have to come in. I might have to pick this pink, pink one up, the corner of this pink one up. I've got no idea what I'm doing on this page. I just, I know I want these bottles down the bottom. And then we're going to have some sort of flowers up the top. Just checking my camera is recording. I didn't record before I started talking and I was talking to myself. I might actually offset this one. But see, I'm finding it increasingly difficult to go into the opportunity shops and actually get <laughs> decent priced items for collage mixed media and things. Even some of the books. I was in there the other day and I picked up this music book and it was only it was only sort of like probably about twenty pages of music paper sort of put into a like an older hard a bit of cardstock so it looked almost homemade and it said church hymns or Sunday school hymns on it and I thought oh that'd be cool turned over to the back of it and it had $12.95 on it it was absolutely ridiculous so that book actually stayed in the shop I didn't buy that one so I'm sort of happy with that at the moment while that's sort of drying I might have some stems coming out of the top. I'll cut those off later. So I'll bring this back down towards me a bit. For my waxy paper that I was gluing on. I'm sort of quite happy with that at the moment. Don't have too many bubbly things. I've got these ones too, which I might cut out individually and add sort of one at the end there or one here. I'm not sure yet. Put those aside. I've also got that little one, which I will save, save for another day. Okay, so excuse my peg over here, just pegging my pages together. Because this is the first few pages in the book, I'm finding, um, I've actually propped the book up with another hard um, soft cover book underneath, so it's a flat surface. Any problem in working in things like this, and I suppose you find it in journals as well, in art, mixed media and art journals, that when you're working the first few pages and you've got a fairly considerable spine, if I take this book out, you'll see what I mean. I'm sort of at an angle, which I didn't want to be, so I thought I'll pop another book under there, and I've got a fairly, um, fairly flat surface to work on. So I've just got my, I've also got some water brushes. And I was going to ask, does anyone else have this problem with their water brushes? This is water. It's not ink. It's not. It's dirty water. I was using it with browns the other day, and the colours actually come up into the water and muddied up my water. Now, am I doing something wrong using my water brushes? These two I haven't used as much, but this one I was using a fair bit with um, with some brown landscapey things yesterday. 
and then I noticed all my water was brown, which is no hassle. I can go and put new water in it. Um, but I was just, yes, interesting that it went up. So these are just watercolour pencils. These are, if I get my packet, um, I actually got them on the, it's a 72 set of watercolour pencils by this brand here. I got them from overseas. They're about $40, $45 quite a few years ago. Um, so they're quite a good set. They only come in a cardboard box and in these little, if I can bring them over, little plastic trays. Um, but they've been fairly good um, for what I used them for. I sort of wanted a set but didn't want to pay expensive. So they're nice and smooth and sort of go on really nicely. Um, I'd love a set of, what I would like, but I have to wait a while until I get better at doing things, is I would love a set of Intense pencils, but Derwent Intense. That would be really nice, but they're um, very pricey in Australia. So I'll just have to wait. So at the moment I'm just sketching in some sort of... Um, I don't know. Stems coming out. I can't talk today. Stems coming out of the vases. I sort of want them to be all, all over the place, and some big ones and little ones. And then I'm not sure what sort of flowers I'm going to do. I thought I'll start off with sketching some of these. I know, a bit of a play on perfume comes from flowers. They smell like flowers, so I thought I'd use my perfume bottles as vases. And let's see how we go. I might put the pencils I'm using up the top, and then I can um, know which ones I've used. So some of these I've hardly used, some of the colours. Um, some of them, like the black, I've used a fair bit, so I'll have to see if I can find... So not so expensive open stock in Australia, so I can just fill in a couple of the colours. Um, I'm missing. So I thought I might sketch in some... I should have sketched in my flowers before I did leave, shouldn't I? That's right. The flowers can go between the leaves. Or well, we might end up just doing leaves. No idea what I'm doing today. I just wanted to play. I thought I'd bring you along for the journey. I've been actually watching quite a few tutorials on YouTube about sort of watercolour and coloured pencils. I'm not a trained artist or anything. I did go to university for six months um, doing a Bachelor of Visual Arts. Oh my God, quite a few years ago. I won't tell you how many years ago because it'll show off my age. Um, but I only stayed for six months. I would have loved to stay longer and completed the course, but unfortunately, if you're in Australia, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I had trouble getting the money to actually study. It's called Aus Study in Australia. Um, and you, if you're doing a full-time course, you can apply to get a grant from the government to sort of pay your way and give you sort of like a wage, but it's not very much, while you study. But with family circumstances and things, they took about seven and a half months to put my claim in and I was trying to work part-time and study and it just wasn't working. So it was interesting. As soon as I gave leave to my course, I did the first semester and then I gave leave to my course to um, go and work full-time. About a month after I left, they finally decided to pay my claim, which was just ridiculous. So I never went back. I sort of worked for a while in my teens and 20s and never went back to university. So I haven't really had any formal art training. I've been drawing and painting sort of all my life. Um, drawing mainly. Sorry, got to reach across and get the pencil sharpener. Um, so I've been drawing and sort of painting and that sort of all my life and sort of doing that since I was a kid. But, yeah, had no real formal training. Done some, like, drawing courses and things. Sometimes there's short courses in um, our town where you can do, like, an eight-week course and the teacher comes in and teaches you how to do. I remember doing life drawing when I was a teenager. That was hilarious. 
um, yeah, full on life drawing that was interesting when you're a teenager. Um, we also did that at university, but I think I started when I did a course when I was about 16, which was um, interesting. We had both male and female models, which was very interesting. Let me tell you now, the male model we had was very um, <laughs> interesting. He was this, his name was Wolfgang, and he was this German older man. It was great to draw because he had lots of creases and folds and all sorts of things. Um, but yes, it's interesting. So I'm probably doing this the wrong way. I'm just laying down some colour. I was watching someone yesterday do with pencils and they sort of laid down colour and built up colour. So I thought I'll do that with my leaves and work out where my light source is. That's what I struggle with is getting the light source right. to see what time it was. Probably definitely won't get this done in one video. Let's get all the pencil done down. I can do this light green to the stems, then we might work on some flowers. I think we're going to have abstractive flowers today. So I like these watercolour pencils because they go on really, really smooth, but then I struggle when I add the water. Um, what sort of colour flowers do we want? Purple? Purples and pinks, I think. I might just do some, like, abstracty flowers. Many of my viewers do a lot of pencil, watercolour pencil, then activating it with water. How do you do it? Do you lay down all your pencil first, then activate it with water? Or do you sort of, at this stage, would you activate it with the water and then come back in over the top of it with... It's one of my favourite pinks. Um, would you come back over the top of it with more pencil and then... Activate it again with water, or do you leave the activation with water till the end? I don't know what I'm going to do yet, I'm just sitting here drawing. Oops. Pencils are taken quite well to this. Um, this is just like book paper, like a really cheap... Um, um, paperback novel so I didn't know how even the pencils would go um, as you can see my black is well used it's a bit tiny because um, I use it for a lot of shading and things and I might use it down the bottom for shading I am on the lookout for what we call I've seen people use them on um, their works called a stabilo pencil I believe it's like a black one that goes really activates really well with water I'm on the lookout for one of those Slowly building up my stash of mixed media stuff. Um, just wondering how I'm going to do a background. But I'll face that when I come to it. Okay. Do we need some more flowers? We've got an odd number. We've got ten. Let's put one up here. Let's get a bigger flower so it matches the... someone yesterday blend with a lighter colour so let me get a really light pink my pencils are no nowhere in order of I'll tell you a funny story actually I'm saying my pencils are no longer in order they come in sort of rainbow order as most pencil sets do but my seven year old daughter discovered that the pencils have numbers on them as you do as you're a seven year old so she decided to sit there and sort my pencils into number order 
which actually takes them out of the rainbow order for some silly reason. So there must be more in the set. I don't know if there's more in the set or not. Um, yeah, I know, I've just switched to my left hand. Still over this side. I'm only scribbling around in many circles. Um, so yeah, she sat there and put all my pencils in number order. So every time I go and put them back in gradient, like colours, like all the oranges, then yellows, then oh yellows, then oranges, then reds, then sort of blues and all that sort of colour, she comes around and my cheeky seven-year-old and changes them all back again. So I've actually given up. And then the numbers are actually written in really gold, really small, just looking for a dark green as I'm talking, really small gold font. So it's a bit hard for me to see sometimes um, with the numbers. So when sometimes I use them, it's hard to sort of see them to put them back. I'm just looking on the numbers. It's got um, 3710 slash and then it's got the number. I'm wondering if this, it wouldn't be 3000 colours. It doesn't actually say um, whether there's more colours. It's a nice base selection. When I purchased them, I wanted a set to play with but didn't, didn't want to pay 80 or $90 a set in case... I then didn't keep going with the watercolour. I haven't used them that much. I've probably had them. Oh, jeez. I've probably had them four or five years, but haven't used them that much. Pulled them out a bit late, more lately. Um, my daughter's used them a fair bit. She likes to sit there and just make rainbows. And now she's sort of seven to eight. She's turning eight in a couple of weeks, actually. I don't mind her using my good stuff because she knows it's... Well, I call them a boomerang, and if you don't know, the people that aren't Aussies, you wouldn't know what a boomerang is. Boomerang is like a U-shaped, um, traditional, Aborigines, um, traditional stick. It's like a U-shape, and you throw it, and it's called a boomerang. It's sort of supposed to spin around the sky and sort of come back to you. So I call them, I call my supplies boomerangs, and I say to it, if they come back in the same uh, condition you bought them, and they do come back, then I don't mind her borrowing them. So she'll sit there and lay all the 72 crayons out and sit there and go through and use them for drawing as well. I've actually got school holidays coming up in um, January, which my daughter's got about three weeks of school left. Um, so what I was going to do is see if I can set up the camera on our kitchen table or on a trestle table and we can both work on a project and you could see both of us work. I don't know how well that's going to don't know how well that's going to go but we will see. You might be able to sit in now, sit with us for the day and just extending some of these green lines just sort of to fill up fill up the area. So I thought that'd be fun for us to do in the holidays. We might set a project a week and film us once a week doing it or something. I don't know. They get in Australia. We get off from school from I think she's off the seventeenth of December, and they go back at the end of January. It's like twenty eighth of January or something, a couple of days before February. So they get a fair whack off. So to keep her entertained is sometimes interesting. Might even take our sketchbooks and pencils out and about this year. That'd be fun. Go out and sit and sketch and make out and go into the local park and sit there and watch everyone stare at us and get out our coloured pencils and our water brushes and sit there and make some art. That'd be fun. There's sort of not much to do for sort of Alexa's age group. She's eight, but her, her art level is well above an eight-year-old, and so is her reading level, and so is quite a few other things in her um, schooling. So her art level, because we've been at art for ages with each other, there's a lot of sort of crafty activities in the school holidays that, like, you can go down to your local shopping centres and sometimes I run free art and craft for the kids, but I find it doesn't stimulate her that much anymore. She needs more, more, like, last... She'll sort of go and do them, but I'll take her about five minutes. Last school holidays they had, um, you go down and you use textures to decorate a paper cup and then they put 
dirt and basil in them. The basil's still growing on our... Ten weeks later, the basil's still growing in the kitchen. Um, so she sat there and put the most intricate pattern on her paper cup and everyone else was just sitting there and scribbling um, different designs, but she sat there and um, did this most intricate design on this cup because she could. Um, but, yeah, she does need more more sort of um, direction. I find if you give Alexis a lot of direction, um, she likes likes it more than to sit there and go, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I often ban the I'm bored word in the school holidays because I hate to hear I'm bored. I think my half an hour is nearly up, so what I might do is, I don't know how much my camera will actually um, film. Like, I've done about 35 minutes before, but I didn't want to, um, just check me, this still recording? <laughs> didn't want to sort of keep going and then run out of memory. So what I might do is stop in half an hour when my phone goes buzz and a bit of darker colour on these and then I will see what I can do with a water brush. You may be looking at, at an incredibly mess. <sighs> don't know what we're going to do for the sky. I might just leave the sky. I've got a bit of bareness over here. Whether I bring a green stem down there. I don't know. I sort of wanted the stems to look like they're growing out of or like these are all used as vases. So I don't know whether I've achieved that or not. Let's put some yellow into these leaves. The last few minutes we've got some yellow tips. I think I was watching the Frugal Crafter with she was colouring in with Prismacolor pencils, which is another pencil I'd like. I don't know how many pencils you can have as an artist before it's too many. Um, but again, they're expensive in Australia. She was colouring a stamped image with Prismacolor pencils and blending, and it just looked awesome. Um, maybe next year, Santa will be nice to me and bring me some beautiful art supplies. Maybe if Alexis asks Santa, ha <laughs> ha. Mummy could use them. So just trying to put some yellow into the leaves. That's what the frugal crafter was doing yesterday. She took a lighter colour and sort of blended all over. I'm surprised this paper is actually still taking the pencil because it's only like crappy book paper. Oh, there's my time. I will I will leave it with you here and go fiddle with my camera. Decide what I'm going to do next. I'm actually not sure whether I'm going to activate with water. That was the original plan, but I don't know. I think we will. What's the worst we can do is we can stuff it up and then we just stick something over the top of it. So thank you for joining me and listening to me waffle and I'll catch you in part two when I add water and let's see what that happens, that does. You might be looking at a beautiful drawing now and you come into part two and it'll be um not so beautiful. Hey, it's all about fun, isn't it? Okay, I will stop calorie and I will catch up with you in the next one. Thank you. Bye for now.